Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the Creepy Basement, aka the Axe Workshop. Today, we're gonna be putting this on this to make this for a buddy of mine at work. All right, first things first, um, I'm just gonna see where this is at by just putting the, where the handle's at, by putting the head on as much as I can. The hardware store handles, a lot of them come cut a little too small. I like to have extra material to work with so I can get a very perfect hang on it but we're working with what we got and uh, we're gonna end up with a good product when we're done so just gonna kind of see where we're at with this All right, just gonna tap the handle back out and see what kind of impression it made on the uh, wood for the eye here kind of see where we got to start taking material away from and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna knock this heavy shouldering down here to make it a nice sweeping taper so this head sits on there nice I'm gonna be doing this at um, home with no like power tools or machinery this is all I use this is called a four in hand or a shoemaker's rasp you have a coarse flat side a smooth flat side a smooth round side a coarse round side or half round I'm sorry so it's called a four in hand you have four files in your hand so what I'm going to do is I'm going to see where it made an impression I know that's going to be a high spot and I'm going to take a little material there the best thing to do uh, when you're doing this is baby steps at first if you're new to hanging an axe take a little bit check it take a little bit and check it because you can't add wood once you took it away the best thing to do is let it take time enjoy the process so i'm going to come in here i see an impression i'm going to take some material away from there so we'll take that place it back on kind of fits around the same area i'm just kind of showing for reference what i mean by just take your time i'm going to take a lot more but just giving you an idea i just tap it like that once we don't have to get the big hammer out yet and i can see you got some gap going on here. We're touching here. We're touching here. There, and we got a little bit of gap. So we're gonna take some out of here and here, and a little bit out of the front. Not in the absolute front and not the absolute back, because as you can see, that's already missing quite a bit of material. <laughs> Oh, I forgot to mention, we already know it fits good, well, loosely, I wouldn't say good, from here to here. So we're not going to take more material off there. We know we're hanging up right here, so we're going to go here and lower, slightly lower, until we get to that step, and then we're going to move down. So if this was, if we were starting up here, like on most handles, you would get your correct size, and then you would start jump your head on a little bit and then you would get an impression and you would go below that and you would start going but you do want this to be a taper because the head's tapered so that's uh the downfall with these this is just straight this is just a straight cut i don't know why they do it but uh you know there's plenty of videos um on youtube explaining the downfall in craftsmanship on making axe handles so uh i'm gonna keep going here but i just figured i'd mention that See, we made it down a little farther. Now we have a little bit of a proud hang there, but we're not done yet, because we still have that shoulder, and I would like to get this head down more. All right, guys, so now what I'm doing here is I'm gonna knock down these big Ophi shoulders and make a nice taper into this part of the uh, handle here, so when the ax sits down on it, um, it doesn't just stop. We call that ninja shelf. So pretty much what we have here, the head goes down and it stops right there. And then you have this protrusion out and it just kind of hangs out there. Yeah, we would still put a wedge in here to apply pressure that way. But once this head starts getting some work done on it, you know, getting blown into logs and whatnot, it's gonna start working. It's working around there and it's gonna loosen right up on you. 
So we want to get a nice taper there. So that's all I'm doing. And how you do that, just take a file. You could use your four in hand. We'll use that for the sake of the video. Um, or if you have yourself a belt sander and you want to uh, speed up the process, you could use that. But like I said, if you take too much, you can't put it back. So we're just gonna work this in till we start making a nice transition from here to here. trooper handle right here remember this is what we started with this is what we got now you see the difference there you see why this is a problem the head stops just stops now we're gonna wedge it right in there so now we knocked this down to make this we didn't really touch too much here because we were sitting okay there so now we're gonna test fit the head again and make sure we got a uh, good head alignment we don't want the head to be this is gonna be you don't, when you put the head on, you don't want it twisted that way or that way. You don't want it tipped down or tipped up. You don't want it over to one side or the other. So now we're going to see how this sits on there. We're going to put it on. Just going to give it a little tap just so it doesn't fall off. Because remember, this one's fitting kind of loose. Normally, you got to kind of work them on a little bit. Take this and on the flat spot, make sure you hit it square. Give her a little jump down. And now what you got here is the head starting to seat. And you can see down in the bottom, you're starting to get a little bit of wood curl there. Okay, that's where it's making its heaviest contact is where it's curling the wood up. So now we check the other side. That side's only curling about right here. So now what we do is we see where we're curling. We're gonna stick this out and we're gonna check this here. This top of the bit. Make sure that's in line with the center of the handle, okay? You, like I said, you don't want it off to the left or the right, and then we'll check for f forward and back. But right now, we are almost dead on with the center. And if you're a little off, it's okay. What they say is, if you're out of range of your palm swell, so if your bit is hanging out past the edge of the palm swell, that's a little too much, you too, to make sure your head isn't tipped too far down or tipped too far up. Um, I forgot where you could find this information. Obviously other videos, possibly internet, almost anywhere. But I'm trying to remember the book. It was either Dudley Cook's book uh, called An Axe to Grind, but um, he states in there that when you lay the axe down, you should be, I believe, in the center of the bit with the palm swell touching like that. I'm gonna take a little marker here. And I'm just gonna mark right like that, where the top of the axe comes there, and then down here, just for a reference. You'll see why in a minute. Okay, so now we top the head back off, and you see we got our purple marker here. We have our mark down there, and we're our mark up here. So now we know without the head on, that's where our head is. That's our reference. And why that? Why we need to know that is because now we're gonna work on um, our wedge. So we lowered this point of contact, which was up here, down lower. And you want the relief for the wedge two thirds the distance of the eye. What I do for this is I take a back saw or a coping saw. You could have a Japanese back saw. You could have a flush cut saw. Something that's going to fit in the kerf and something that's going to remove, remove material. So this kerf is cut very tight so this is actually going to benefit us because we have a little bit of a gap to fill because remember how small this eye was cut so this will also help us get a fatter wedge in there too without breaking this handle could be a little rough to get started like i said it's kind of tight don't cut yourself wear gloves and take your time also check too bottom your saw all the way out make sure you're not cutting your kerf like that and you end up with one side way lower than the other. You want to try to keep it as even as possible. You don't want to end up like that with your finished cut. Because remember, your wedge is going to bottom out here before it bottoms out there. Try to keep it relatively straight. This here has kind of a sharp edge right there. So you can imagine 
this coming to almost a 90 degree angle and creating a sharp little edge around here. When you pound that down into the wood, bang, 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 it goes down. Um, over time, that it's gonna make a little cut. It's gonna make a little dig out in the wood. Um, I haven't proven this for myself. This is just hearsay. Um, I know a lot of people are really big on this and I, I learned this little trick from uh, Buck and Billy Ray. He has a whole video on it and he elaborates on the theory behind um, why he does it. Um, I'm not gonna put words in the guy's mouth. I can't remember exactly what he said, but I've done it on all my hangs and I have had it, haven't had an issue. So does it work, does it not work? To me, it takes five minutes and uh, I haven't had an issue from it. So all you do is you either take a chainsaw file or I like to use a half round a mill bastard file and you just kind of come in here like this and you're just going to take the burr out. That's all. Don't have to go too crazy. So you use a half round or you take your chainsaw file and you can get right in here. Or if you have a Dremel, which I don't have, I'm sure that would be great. But this is what I got and this is what I've been using. So just knocking that burr back, making it, remember we made a taper here, now we're making a slight taper here. Everything's just going to mate together nice and be happy. And you'll live in harmony until you snap your handle. I don't know if you guys can see that, but you see that little shininess there? All we did was just take some material out. You're not making this hole bigger. That's not the objective. We're not making this bigger. We're taking that burr out so we're not cutting into the wood. And now it's nice and smooth. Okay. Now we have the burr all tailored up. We have this fitting how we want. Next step is to make our wedge work with our uh, head and handle. So this is the wedge that the handle came with. Most handles will come with them. I've had some that haven't, but that could have been that they fell off in shipping. So if you look, this is much longer than our eye relief here. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna sit this on. I usually do something like that, just to get a general idea. Take my handy marker again. And we know we need to go to about there. That's about the tip. I usually leave myself a little extra, because if you look here, this is square, this is not. We're gonna end up sanding the corners off of this and trying to match that shape as best we can for the best fit that we can get. Same thing with the back. Okay, so now we have that cut and you can see this kind of fits in there. It's now, like I said, we're gonna tailor this in to kind of match that shape the best we can and then that'll help it fit better. Same thing with the back. The back's rounded. We're going to try to get it a little rounder and uh, then we'll round the edges because we'll be pounding this in with a hammer. Any sharp edges will uh, make this more likely to break and we want to like temper it. You can use sandpaper. This is how I started doing it. I take sandpaper and I do this. I hang it about, hold it on about the angle that I want, and I do that. And I sit here, and sit here, and I check it, take more out. We rounded that out, rounded the back out. This one probably could took a little thinner, but it'll be okay. So that's about the same shape as our, our eye. That'll fit nice. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do our final fit. We're gonna place this on, just give her a little tap on the ground. Turn this upside down. Hold it kind of loosely, kind of tightly. You don't want to hit it with the hammer and this thing goes flying out of your hands to the ground, but you also want to give it a little bit of uh, wiggle room there. So we're, we're, we're not going to sit here and beat on this thing. It's not what we're going to do because you'll end up splitting your handle out. One or two hits and she's home. You'll hear the difference in sound from it being very hollow sounding to a solid sound. So give it one more, that's it. When I put my wedge in, I just do a little bit of uh, boiled in seed oil, 
on either side, not a lot, you don't wanna drown it. Uh, to me, it just helps the sliding in process better. And also too, this isn't ever really gonna get uh, linseed oil on it like your handle will when you treat it. So I feel like now's a good time to do it. There's plenty of guys out there that do it dry, but uh, who likes doing it dry? Also, guys, wood glue it. I have yet to experiment with this only because um, I'm still kind of new at it. So if I get a bad hang or my head starts to come loose and I want to investigate why, I want to be able to retract this, remove it out. And how I do that is I pilot drill holes and I can do a video on extracting wedges, but essentially I just get this wedge back out, figure out what I did wrong, what I did right, what I can improve, and then I can rehang it on that handle. Um, and then and re-wedge it and go at it again. And once I get more comfortable with it, I maybe I'll go ahead and wood glue it. But uh, usually once you wood glue this wedge in there, she's not coming out too easily. So take a little bit of this, boiled linseed oil, little dot there, give her a little rub dub dub in the tub. Don't have to be pretty about it, doesn't have to be perfect. And then on the other side. Okay, that's it, nothing crazy. putting our wedge in push that in there make sure we're kind of centered where we want to be I'm a little far back but we should be all right and now we're gonna start pounding this old girl in here so you can do it upside down like this a lot of guys do that and they hit the bottom and they sink it down you get guys that do it from the top like this. Um, I do it different every time. I'm Like I said, I'm still new at it. I haven't found what way I like the best. There's guys I'll tell you to use metal on it. You're more susceptible to breaking the wedge with that. Uh, you could use a rubber mallet. You could use whatever you got. You could use another ax. You could use the pole of another ax. Whatever you have to do to get this wedge in there, do it. I like. Try to get that wedge in there as square as you can. I'll give you guys a better shot here in a second. If you split your wedge, it's okay. It's not the end of the world. Some guys will tell you it's the end of the world, but I promise it's not. And pound that sucker in there. If she doesn't take any more, it's okay. You don't want to go too far because I might be bottomed out. My wedge is a almost as long as my relief cut. Now, if you look here, you see how this, the, 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 the actual ax handle, not the wedge, the eye here, see how that's doing that? Kind of, we call that mushroomed out. You want that and we're gonna hang it proud, which means we're gonna leave some wood sticking off the top of the ax head here instead of it being flush with the top of the eye because that's gonna help the ax head stay on as well. We have the wedge spreading it, and it's spreading it out over there. So it's wider than the hole. It's gonna help keep it on. Um, I'm gonna give this a couple more love taps. I think we're pretty much home. And uh, then I'll show you the next step. All right, now what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take our coping saw, our flush cut saw, whatever saw you got that's gonna work, is we're gonna take and cut this off smooth. Okay, we're gonna cut that off, but we're not gonna cut it flush. We're gonna keep it hung proud. All right, I like to keep about, we'll call that a, a heavy eighth, less than a quarter of material um, hanging out over here. Like about three sixteenths of an inch of handle coming out through the eye. So you just kind of eyeball it. If you guys are going to be bothered if it's not exactly straight, um, I advise you take the necessary precautions to making this as straight as you possibly can. Um, I've done that and I've got them perfect and then I've had a handle break and I spent so much time uh, trying to make sure this was pretty and you know, it's wood, it's going to break, you're going to sink this, you know, through a log and mar this all up. So make it as straight as you can. 
because you know take pride in your work I'm not saying do a shoddy job but if it does come out a little uneven it's not the end of the world okay now once you cut the top portion off Remember how it looked all ugly and curly and cracked? Not so much anymore, it looks really nice. So don't, don't be afraid of that wedge getting a little marred up. We're gonna be taking that off anyway. I don't like sharp edges like that. Sharp edges, when they get contacted, they chip out. Just like when we hammered the wedge in, we're just gonna chamfer them a little bit. Finally, what we're going to do is we're going to take our boiled linseed oil, do a little drop here on the eye. That boiled linseed oil really brings out the grain. Look at that. That's gorgeous. All right. So when I thin handles down, I normally only use these two tools. You got a four in hand rasp. Okay. And then a card scraper. Um, you could use a knife, you could use sandpaper, you could use a bunch of different things but you would just use the rasp to remove material. And then I like to finish this gives, you could thin the whole handle with this, it would just take you a long time. And you do that and you remove material like that. But today what I'm gonna use is just an orbital sander. If you guys have one of these, um, this is a great uh, efficient way to do it, but you gotta be careful because it's gonna remove material kind of quick. So if you're not paying attention, you can go too far. I do still go back through with my files and my card scraper to get it perfect. Can't remember if I mentioned this before or not, but when you're doing a handle, um, you do want to constantly check your work. You don't want to take too much off of one side or too much of the underneath or on top than the other side. You want it to be symmetrical. Um, sometimes when I thin a handle, what I do is I go use the handle to um, a little bit before the absolute thinnest I wanna go. I go outside, I use it, and I'll stick it in a stump like that. And that way I can look down the handle nice and I can handle it. I'm outside actually swinging it. Instead of just sitting in, in my basement doing this, um, you use a little bit, it's like, oh, you know what? I want to take a little more. I want to take a little more here. Or, oh, I'm glad I didn't take that much. So that's another option too. Go outside, swing it a couple times, stick it in a stump, look down it, make sure you're straight and uh, take more if you need to or find out it might be good how it is. So if you looked at this here, you can see this grind. So when I'm, when I'm talking about the grind, I'm, I'm talking more so about the angle of the cheeks, how thin the cheeks are. So we're using a metal file here. We're using a double cut and then a smooth cut file. Double cut will remove material quicker. So when you think of something that's sharp, you think that the absolute about the absolute edge, just like this knife here, like this absolute edge, if you cut some paper with it, that's sharp. While that's true, when you're trying to put a heavy piece of metal into wood and remove wood with it, that absolute cutting edge isn't the most important factor. It's actually how thin these cheeks are. So if you had something really fat and didn't have the correct angle on the cheeks, it wouldn't be able to drive itself into the wood as far. Think of a splitting mall, for instance. A splitting mall is very wide and very fat where that doesn't really go into the wood. It most of the time bounces off the wood until it establishes a crack and then it splits the wood apart. When you're chopping, you want it to be a thin angle so it can go sink itself into the wood. So here's a factory ax, okay? You see this grind here? If you look directly at this, 
you see the cheeks are here, okay? And then it makes a triangle. So you have your triangle here, and then you have your cheeks here. So this is just a basic grind. You see this on a lot of uh, store-bought axes or hardware store axes. This, for instance, is a council tool axe. Um, I did a review on this. It is usable out of the box, but we did tune it up anyway on the other one I have. So that's what I'm doing here to this axe. What we're basically doing is this line here, essentially we're pulling it back, okay? So now if you look at this axe, instead of this line being right here on the end, this line is now back here in a half moon shape or or a banana grind. Um, and then we'll worry about the actual cutting edge there or a micro bevel. Um, and we'll do that and it's be very thin and then we'll put the stone on it to make that sharp. But if you have fat cheeks, it's not gonna penetrate into the wood as far. So you thin this area out here and then last you worry about the absolute cutting edge. I'll try to demonstrate that quick. All right, so if you look at my file here, I'm not touching the cutting edge. See, I still have that much before I'm on the absolute cutting edge. Right here, I'm just on the cheeks. See, I could do this all day and I'm not scratching that absolute edge. So that's what I mean when we're filing the cheeks. We're gonna have this angle. So if you were to put this on the eye of the ax and lay it down like that, you see how it's almost flat? You have a little bit of a gap. So what I like to do, so we don't, one, scratch the eye up, but two, just give it a little bit up from there, barely any, just enough to take it off. And then we're going like that. We're removing material until you could use a marker and mark this all up, make cross hatching to make sure that you're getting the correct amount of contact and you're, you're not all wavy and taking too much out of here and out of here or too much out of the middle. You wanna have it nice and even. And then once you do it a bunch of times, the, my first grind, um, since then I did fix it, but it was absolutely terrible. I mean, it was horrible. It cut wood well until I figured out how to really sharpen an ax and then I really knew what cutting wood well was like. So we're taking material out of here. And then what I like to do is I make myself kind of like a jig. So a lot of people say, your micro bevel is twice the angle of this. Um, I don't really measure. I go by kind of like how it looks. And I'm not saying I do it for looks. I'm just saying like, okay, I know that that's enough. I could probably take more, but I'll try it at this angle and see how it performs. Like the handle, if you take too much metal, you can't put it back. You could always take more. So then what I do is I'll put my glove like that. And I find that that's just about where I want it. And that'll end up giving me about uh, on this particular head, that'll give me about 20 degrees. Now, I don't know if that works for your ax, but you know, find something that uh, works well for you. And then this part, I draw a file. That way I know I'm getting it flat. And then this is the absolute edge here. And then what's gonna happen when you actually bring that metal all the way out to the edge, you're gonna get a nice burr that you'll be able to feel on the other side. You'll be able to catch your fingernail on it. We're not there yet. We got a little burr here. So we got to take more out of here and here. And you don't have to draw a file this. You could do this like this. You just hold the angle and you do that. And I'm, I'm going to just be honest and I'm not good at holding this angle like that. I end up doing this. I end up rolling it or I tip it too high and then I look down and or I go lay my sharpening stone on it and it's, you know, got a low spot or something like that. So I just found this works well for me. It may not work for you. You might be able to freehand the whole thing without some sort of jig. And that's great. I wish I could do that. Um, the more practice I get, the better I am getting at freehanding it, but I'm, I'm not there yet. All right, so now we're at, I got the grind about where I want to. And I apologize if I'm not explaining that correctly. It makes a lot of sense in my head. <clears throat> and like I said, I just watched other people on YouTube um, do sharpening videos and, uh, you know, I learned from them. So I know what I'm, I'm visualizing their videos um, and I hope I'm explaining it well. If I'm not, I apologize. I'm still very new at this. Go check out on Skill Colt. That's his YouTube name, Skill Colt, Steve Edholm. He has a video 
It's called Make It Chop. It's about a 30 something minute video, explains the geometry, explains so much. Even Ben Scott has a good video about um, sharpening an ax. I believe Kevin does too. I just can't remember the name of the video off the top of my head. The only one that's coming to mind where I can remember the exact name is um, Skill Colts Make It Chop. He goes into the geometry if you want a really in depth um, theory on it. And then he goes and actually sharpens his uh, Husqvarna ax. Sorry about all that rambling. So I'm gonna go here and check. And this ax before was around 27 degrees. So now you see 27 is very wiggly on there. So then we go down to 25, still a little wiggly. Okay, 22 and a half fits just about perfect. It bottoms out 20, it doesn't bottom out all the way. So that's safe to say that's about a 22, 22 and a half degree grind. Now, like I said, that's how I gather the information. That's, I could be calling it something completely different than uh, what you're familiar with hearing. It just makes sense to me. And uh, so far I've been pretty lucky with my grinds and uh, my axes I feel are working pretty efficiently. Some should be ground down a little thinner by most people's standards, but um, I'll get there. I haven't had the time to uh, go back and fix any of them. So now finally, uh, you can go out right after file sharpening, right out into the woods and process wood but I like to go after with a stone. Okay, so now I'll start stone sharpening on the rough side. The coarse side on this I think is like two something, 250 grit maybe, and then the fine side is uh, maybe 400 grit. So all you do is, I like to get on the cheeks just to get some of the file marks out. So make sure your stone's wet, so it'll start to build up a slurry, which is all like the metal and uh, a little bit of stone material. You can clean that up nice. I also like the stone look. I don't like looking at the file marks. On little file marks, I don't care about, whatever. But them heavy file marks kind of, I don't know, they bother me a little bit. But they do go away once you start working with the ax. But I like getting that nice like swirly look on there. So anyway, you do that, do the same thing on the other side. And then when you go to sharpen your absolute cutting edge, lay your stone on the cheek and you're gonna see this darkness in here, this gap, this void. Once you do that, you close that until there's no void. And you start going in circles, and now you're cutting your absolute cutting edge. And what you should see here, you should see a little bit of material right at the edge. Some should roll over a little bit, but you could see it starting to form up there. And then, again, you'll get a burr on this side because we're pushing material like this. So we'll go through, you know, like I said, you don't want to have that gap, so you're not sharpening the absolute cutting edge. Go back and forth. I don't really count or time it. There's guys that will say, like, if you do four passes on one side, you got to do four on the other. While I think that is true, I have a really hard time. Like, right now, I don't really know where I'm at. So I'll go for a little bit. And I'll feel, and I do have a, a burr all the way down. So now I'll take the stone, and I'll do the other side. So far, so good.
Oh man, what an axe. What do you guys think? I think that went pretty well. And you know what else I think? I think Billy and his son are gonna absolutely love this axe. And um, Billy, I hope you get a lot of enjoyment out of this thing. Um, I have no doubt in my mind that this is gonna last a long time. Um, man, what? I don't know what else to say, but this it just came out beautiful. I'm not trying to pat myself on the back here or anything. Don't take it that way, please. But it's just, I don't know, it's just some, maybe it's the hardwood handle. I just, it's gorgeous looking to me. I, I'll tell you what, I wish it was in my collection, but I'm happy it's going to a really good friend. Um, yeah, so guys, these hardwood handles, um, they come out just beautiful with that, with that linseed oil finish on them. And uh, real nice tight hang. Nice wood grain. I don't know if I said it in this video or not, but uh, Billy, the guy I'm building this for, he went and he picked this handle out himself. So super proud of him for listening to uh, me and what you should look for in a handle. Because uh, he went to a hardware store, he went to Ace Hardware and picked this out himself. So I know he was really, really excited about that, which I think is awesome. So I'm glad I was able to give him this head, get it hung for him. Um, I know I might get a lot of flack for this because I did not build this handle um, or make the handle but my uh, my brother got me a brand for Christmas and uh, I was just really excited to use it so please don't chop my head off um, that I put a brand in a, a handle I didn't make my, my plan is to start making handles um, not for like sale or anything like that because I'll probably be pretty mediocre at it for a while but uh, I want to I want to learn how to do it. So he thought it'd be cool to surprise me with a brand. So please, guys, I didn't put this on here to say that I I created this handle. Um, I was just really excited to use it, and I thought it'd be an awesome idea to give that uh, nice dark um, heartwood handle a, a nice brand. But yeah, I think I'm gonna wrap it up here, guys. I don't want to ramble on too much. There's not too much to say, Billy. Um, I hope you're as excited about this axe as I am. I think you're absolutely gonna absolutely going to love it and um, I hope you guys learned something from this video I appreciate you guys watching um, yeah I mean I'll catch you guys on the next one I just sorry I'm just <laughs> I'm just so excited about this thing maybe I should put it down before I talk guys thank you so much for watching I hope you enjoyed the video um, shoot a comment down below let me know what you think let me know how you think it turned out uh, or how it chopped wood or anything just say hi but uh, thanks guys we'll catch you on the next one